Chapter 2. Part 2. The Sequel. My brother, Calvin, is nine and knows a lot of things. For example, he knows that when they make a scary movie, they always make a sequel. And the sequel, he says, is always scarier than the original. So when they make a field trip and it's scary and there's a part two, the best thing to do is to not go. But if you're already on your way, then the best you can do is to stay out of sight. So I flattened. I folded into Alvin the paper airplane. Then I drifted up and out the school bus window where I could ride above the bus, but not in the bus, where I would be stuck going to part two. Being a paper airplane is super duper. Soon our big yellow bus pulled up in front of Orchard House, home of the Alcotts. Lucky for me, I was a paper airplane and not a boy. Alvin, Earth to Alvin, said Flea, who was sitting next to me. We're here, Alvin. Ooh, girls are so annoying. Just like that, I was a boy again. My throat tightened, my knees locked. I clutched my empty PDK and what was left of my lunch to my chest and froze. I could hardly believe it. If I had known I was going to the Alcott house, I would have gotten malaria. Miss P, Flea shouted, I think Alvin needs the bathroom. Alvin, yelled Miss P from the front of the bus. Can you hold it? We'll be inside in just a minute. Laughter rocked the bus, but it wasn't funny. I couldn't move, and Flea, who likes to be helpful and likes to speak for me at school, was wrong. I didn't need the bathroom. I needed to go home. How I ever made it off the bus, I'll never know. How I ever made it up the front walk is a mystery, too. But I think we had to use the buddy system and hold hands with someone so that no one would get lost between the bus and the bushes. So I can't tell you how I finally ended up at the house. Where an owl was hoo, hoo, hooting. And the giant arms of gigantic trees swayed closer and closer. Where the door creaked open and a voice came out. Welcome, boys and girls. It was a lady dressed in old-fashioned clothes. Very old-fashioned clothes. Like the kind Ralph Waldo Emerson wore. I'm Louisa May Alcott and I'll be taking you through my home today. Louisa May Alcott? She died 300 years ago, as everyone knows. I opened my mouth to scream, but nothing came out. My skin felt like paper, my tongue rolled up like a carpet. But mysteriously, my feet started moving forward, like everyone else's, and we followed the dead author right through her gift shop and straight into her spooky kitchen. When we first moved to Concord, we lived in the house next door, said the dead Louisa May. I was a young teenager then, and I remember my parents hiding runaway slaves. My father was a good friend of Ralph Waldo Emerson, and we moved from Boston to be close to him. Louisa May looked around at everyone. Then she looked me smack in the eye. <gasps> After that, the audio portion of the program went dead. I didn't hear anything she said in her dining room. I didn't hear anything she said in her parlor. I didn't hear anything she said in her dad's study. In fact, I don't remember those rooms at all, except for a couple of creepy paintings that had eyes that followed you. This place gives me the creeps, said Sam. Me too, said Naya. I said nothing. I'd been to Orchard House once before with my family, and the only thing I remember from that visit was that I had to be carried out like a corpse. But the girls weren't scared at all. It must have been fun doing th plays in the dining room and having your audience in the parlor, Flea said to Sarah Jane. Yeah, and to change costumes, too, said Ophelia. They hurried behind Louisa May up the stairs, but Miss P had to shoo the boys to get us to go up. Swish, 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 went the dead author's 300-year-old dress. Creak, 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 went the stairs. This is the room where I wrote in my journal and wrote my story, said Louisa May, when we got upstairs. And this is the desk that I wrote at. My father made it for me. On her desk was an old-fashioned pen, the kind you dip into ink. It was sitting next to a glass ball for holding ink, but it was empty. There was no ink. But there sure was a lot of writing on a piece of paper right in front of it. How did she write all that without any ink? It was very creepy. 
My stomach lurched. My hand slipped on my still empty PDK. And now this is my favorite part of the tour, said the pale Louisa May. You may sit in my room a while and write something in your journals. Miss P beamed. We've been practicing writing in our journals, she said, and everyone has been looking forward to doing that here. We have? Louisa May pointed to a big spooky photograph of her dad on the wall. Then she pointed at an owl that her sister had painted on the fireplace. A small owl statue peered from the mantel. I looked around. I wondered if Louisa May had died on that bed. I shuddered. Before I knew it, everyone was sitting on the faded flowery carpet and had pulled out their notebooks and was scratching away at them with their pencils. Everyone that is except me. I was standing in the middle of the room, my mouth wide open, my eyes glued to her, and I was stuck. Alvin, I heard Miss P say, did you remember your journal? Journal? He needs the bathroom, Flea tried to whisper to Miss P. Flea is always trying to be helpful, but whispering isn't one of her talents. Oh dear, said Miss P, I forgot. Laughter rocked the room of the dead. I didn't need the bathroom, but I couldn't say so. I was all freaked out. And when I'm all freaked out, like whenever I'm in school, I can't talk. I can't grunt. I can't even squeak. I'll show him where it is, said the very creepy Louisa May. I could have peed in my pants, but I didn't. Like I said, I didn't need the bathroom. Come on, she said, this way. If this were a scary movie of my life, this would be the part where the spooky music gets louder and louder and everything in the room begins to spin and you would know that I was about to die. But this wasn't a movie. It was the real thing. And mysteriously, my feet were slipping and sliding right out of the room. Swish, 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 went the 300-year-old dress down the stairs. Squeak! went my sneakers after her. We walked back through the same creepy rooms until we got to the gift shop where we bumped into another Louisa May. Hey, said the other Louisa May, who was also wearing a 300-year-old dress. Hey, yourself, said the first Louisa May. How's your group going, asked the second Louisa May. Fine, said Louisa May, except for this kid who needs the bathroom. There's one in every group, said the other. It's there in the corner, kid, said the original Louisa May, pointing past the books. Don't take too long or your group will leave without you. The Louisa Mays giggled. Normally, I love gift shops, but I had no time to love this one. I shot into the bathroom as fast as I could and locked the door. My heart was jumping around like a kangaroo on fire. I pumped the soap. I washed my hands. I checked myself in the mirror. I flushed the toilet, just in case. Then I sat on the toilet. I pulled out my pencil and notebook and wrote in my best shaky handwriting. How to survive a creepy dead author house tour. Number one, go to the bathroom. Number two, lock the bathroom. Number three, stay in the bathroom. I added my new emergency plan to my PDK, but the problem with my PDK was that it was empty. I'd lost everything on the thorough Alcott lawn. And the problem with being in the bathroom was that it was suffocating. It was a small, enclosed space with a slanted ceiling, like a coffin. I didn't feel so good. I have claustrophobia. Quickly, I pushed back the curtains and looked out the window. I gasped. Beneath the trees, there were not two Louisa Mays, but three Louisa Mays, and they were all standing around laughing. One was even smoking. Yikes! Clones. I knew all about clones. A clone is a copycat, but no one can tell it apart from the real thing until the clones take over the world and it's too late. And as everyone knows, humans and clones cannot peacefully coexist. I don't remember what happened next. If I were a girl, I might have fainted. But I'm not a girl. I'm a boy. So I just passed out. Then I had a dream. And my dream, police sirens were wailing in a fire truck, too. It was super duper. Then a bunch of cop cars screeched to a halt and surrounded Orchard House. Will the real Louisa May Alcott please come out with their hands up? A policeman's voice boomed through a megaphone. You are under arrest to go to the cemetery. Everything was going just great until boom! 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 Is someone in there? A voice yelled. Open this door. We're coming in. I blinked my eyes. I was sprawled in an X on a cold, hard floor. Where was I? It didn't feel like home. It didn't feel like school. 
Then through the door I heard swish, 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 the sound of 300-year-old skirts. Ah! My mouth opened to scream, but nothing came out. Then a huge Louisa May, the size of Godzilla, cracked the door off its hinges like a graham cracker from a gingerbread house. The hairs on my head stuck out like one of Gung Gung's Chinese calligraphy brushes struck by lightning. Clones are super duper strong. They can rip a door from the wall and suck all the air out of the room, just like that. The good news is that I didn't miss our bus and Miss P forgot all about busting me. Whoever said field trips are educational was right. I learned quite a lot today. Like, don't mess with Louisa Mazilla.